In this presentation, we will talk about uh, Fermi's theory of beta decay. Based on the Newton hypothesis, in 1934, Fermi described the beta decay process by assuming the facts given below. The electron and uh, neutron are created simultaneously by transforming a neutron into a proton in a nucleus or vice versa. When a neutron is converted into a proton, an electron and uh, antineutrino are generated. Suppose a proton is converted into a neutron, a positron and a neutrino are generated. Therefore, a Fermi used a general notation neutrino here instead of giving antineutrino. Then his second assumption is the energy is conserved during the decay process. The electron and the antineutrino share the total energy. The product nucleus does not share kinetic energy due to its uh, large mass. And the third assumption is neutrino emission is like the emission of uh, photons at the time of de excitation of a nucleus. Consider the nucleus in the excited state. When it comes to the ground state, photon is uh, emitted. The interaction responsible for the beta decay process is weak. Therefore, we have to use our perturbation theory to solve this uh, problem. For that, Fermi introduced his golden rule. The Fermi golden rule explains the transient probability per unit time. That is equal to 2 pi by h cross into hif square dn by d. Here, the absolute square of hif is having the interaction Hamiltonian term. The value of HIF is equal to psi of star H psi i d tau. Psi of is the wave function of the system in its final state. Psi i, the wave function of the system in its uh, initial state. H, the Hamiltonian operator that describes the weak interaction between the two states. Dn by d is the density of uh, final states. It gives the number of available final states per unit energy. N is the number of states of particles involved in the decay that can be confined to a volume given and E is the total energy of the particle. Now for our uh, neutrino emission, we have to develop the value of HIF and the density of final states. Consider the equation conversion of uh, neutron into proton plus electron and antineutrino. For this equation, the value of uh, HIF equal to G, some coupling constant G into Psi F star, capital Psi F star, then matrix element M into Psi I D tau. This is equation 2. Here G equal to Fermi's coupling constant. Now, capital Psi F equal to Psi of daughter into Psi of electron into Psi of neutrino, which is equal to Psi of daughter is small Psi F, Psi of electron, small Psi E, Psi of antineutrino. If you want to find out the value of psi of star, that is small psi of star, small psi e star, then psi nu with a star, is small psi of star, psi e star, psi antineutrino with a star equal to psi nu. Here we have to Keep in your consideration 
wave function corresponding to the antineutrino and a star. Complex conjugate of the wave function corresponding to antineutrino equal to wave function of the neutrino. Now, the value of HIF equal to G into give this I F star psi E star psi neutrino M psi A into D down. This is equation 3. Now we have to find out the values of psi E star into psi nu. The electron wave function is a plane wave. We know that the electron wave function is a into e power i k dot r. This is equal to psi e. This is electron wave function. the next step we have to write since it is a plane wave electron wave function is a plane wave therefore the electron wave function is a into e power ik dot r here a is a normalization constant we have to find out its value psi e equal to a e power ik dot r then psi e star equal to e star e power minus i k dot r. Now we have to apply the normalization condition. Psi e star psi e d tau equal to 1. If you apply this normalization condition a star into a integral e power minus i k dot r into e power i k r is equal to 1. This is a square integral d tau equal to 1. This is volume element. Integral of dv equal to v. Therefore, a square into v equal to 1. Here, a square is equal to 1 divided by v. Then, a equal to 1 divided by root of v. Now we may write the electron wave function as 1 divided by root v e power i k dot r. Plane wave equation is a e power i k dot r. Now we know the value of uh, k. We know that uh, the propagation constant k equal to 2 pi by lambda but lambda equal to h by mv de Bragg wavelength therefore k equal to 2 pi by h into mv which is p by h cross because mv equal to p 2 pi by h is 1 by h cross now the electron wave function becomes psi e which is equal to 1 divided by root v e power i by h cross P e dot r. This is electron wave function. Now psi e star complex conjugate of this psi e star psi e star equal to 1 divided by root b e power minus i by h cross P e dot r. In the same manner we can write for neutrino 1 by root v e power minus i by h cross here p neutrino dot r. Nothing we have to change. Then multiplication of these two psi e star psi neutrino equal to 1 by v e power minus i by h cross P e plus P nu dot R. 
just uh, 1 by root b into 1 by root b 1 by v e power minus i by h cross into this into e power minus h cross into this is just you have to add a power m into a power n equal to a power m plus n that rule we have applied now we have to expand this term e power minus i by h cross p plus p nu dot r equal to 1 minus i by h cross p plus p nu dot r minus 1 by 2 h cross square p plus p nu dot r all square just i have used the formula e power x equal to 1 plus x plus x square by 2 factorial this is almost equal to 1 we have discussed the rest of the terms therefore psi e star psi nu equal to 1 by v this is v of our hif equation 3 becomes hif i don't the equation 3 hif equal to g into psi f star psi e star psi nu m into psi a this is equation 3 this becomes g by v integral psi f star psi e star psi nu is 1 by v already we have substituted then m into psi a this is the value of hif this is equation for this is modified as g by v matrix element m i f this is equation number 5 hif now we have to find out the value of dn by d the density of final states the number of states in the phase space available for an electron with a momentum in the range of p and uh, p plus dp is dn dn equal to volume in phase space divided by volume of the single cell volume in phase space is volume due to position phase into volume due to momentum space volume due to position space is this is dv dx dy dv z is dv integral of dv equal to v then volume of the unit cell is h cube so v by h cube into integral dpx dpy dp z we have to find out this value volume of the momentum space in momentum space the position space xy and z are replaced by momentum coordinates px py and pz respectively if you draw a sphere with origin o as center and the radius equal to p then all the points on this sphere will have the same momentum p now construct another one sphere with the radius p plus uh, dp then the particles available on the surface is having the same momentum value p plus uh, dp now the volume of the moment of space is nothing but the volume enclosed between these two spheres the volume of the moment of space between the moment of value is p and p plus dp equals the volume of the spherical shell enclosed between the two spheres volume of the moment of space equal to surface area of the sphere of radius p into thickness of the shell our surface area of the sphere is given by the formula 4 pi r square here the radius is p so 4 pi p square into thickness is dp this is p this is p plus dp so this thickness is dp now this equation dn is represented by the number 5 this is equation 5 write down the equation 5 here dn equal to v by h cube into dpx 
dpy dpz substitute this value dpx dpy dpz is 4 pi p square dp 4 pi v by h q p square dp this is equation 6 this is the value of dn dn value we have arrived now we have to find out the value of uh, dn by d up to this stage everything is clear now we have to find out the value of uh, dn by d that is our a dn by d equal to what now we have to write down the dn value for electron and uh, neutrino see this is the general formula dn then for an electron dn e which is equal to 4 pi v by h q p e square d p e whereas for neutrino d n neutrino equal to 4 pi v by h q p neutrino square d p neutrino then d n equal to d n e into d n neutrino which is equal to 16 pi square v square by h power 6 p e square p nu square d p e d p nu this is the value of uh, d n provide some number for this this is equation 7 now d n by d e equal to 16 pi square v square by h power 6 p square p nu square d p e d p nu by d this is equation 8 now the total energy is shared by the electron and uh, neutrino if E is constant, that is energy consumed by the electron is a constant, dE equal to dE nu. Now the equation 8 is modified as dN by dE which is equal to 16 pi square v square by h power 6 p square p nu square dp into dp nu divided by de nu this is equation 9 now according to relativistic hamiltonian e square equal to c square p square plus m0 square c power 4 here this term is resmos energy term resmos energy term resmos of neutrino is 0 Therefore, energy of the neutrino, if this factor is 0, E neutrino equal to C into P nu. E square equal to C square P square e equal to C into P nu. Take the positive root along. Then, D E nu, which is equal to C into D P nu. Now, 
in equation 9 instead of d in u we have to substitute this value c into d in u now dn by d e becomes Sixteen pi square v square h power six p square p v square d p into one by c. This is equation number ten. Now we have to find out the value of uh, p square p new square. See this uh, equation e nu equal to c int p nu. Therefore, p nu equal to e nu by c. But total energy e equal to e e plus e nu. Therefore, e nu equal to e minus E, e then p nu equal to instead of e nu you have to put this e minus e all divided by c then p nu square equal to e minus e whole square by c square now dn by d equal to 16 pi square v square by h power 6 p square then instead of uh, p nu square we have to substitute this value e minus e whole square by c square then dpe into 1 by c this is equation number 11 now transient probability p of e dpe which is equal to 2 pi by h cross hif square into dn by d now substitute this 2 pi by h cross then g square by v square m i f square then this value 16 pi square v square whole divided by h power 6 p square e minus e whole square divided by C cube into DPE. Now we have to simplify this. This is equal to 2 pi by h cross g square m i f whole square 16 pi square. This v square v square we cancel divided by h power 6 p square e minus e whole square divided by c cube into dpe which is equal to g square m i f square then p square e minus e whole square dpe divided by 2 pi cube c cube h cross power 7 already one h cross is present here h power 6 is available so we have to change this in terms of h cross power 6 so that h cross power 7 we have arrived for that we should multiply by 2 pi uh, cube in the denominator. Denominator should be multiplied by 2 pi cube. This h power 6 is changed into h cross power 6. Already one h cross is present. So, totally 
we may get our h cross power 7 we need 64 in the numerator 32 is present 2 into 16 so the denominator should be multiplied by 2 this is the value of uh, p of e dp transient probability for an electron everything is okay h cross power 7 c cube to pi cube now we have to apply the Coulomb correction the beta particle must experience the Coulomb force after emission the nucleus of charge plus is a d will accelerate positrons plus plus repels but retard electrons decelerate the electrons this implies that we will have more electrons with uh, low energy and uh, high energy positrons than predicted by the above equation therefore we must compute the Coulomb correction term f of z comma e to the above equation so if you include Coulomb correction this equation is uh, modified as g square m i f rho square divided by 2 pi cube c cube h cross power 7 then this Coulomb correction term f of z comma e z comma e into p square e minus e whole square dpe this is the inclusion of Coulomb correction f p d p this is p of p probability for an electron with the momentum e p of p this is also p of p probability of emission for an electron with the momentum say once again go through the Coulomb correction term the beta particle must experience a Coulomb force after emission the nucleus of charge plus is a t plus is a t attracts the electron this is known to you therefore deceleration possible is possible for an electron uh, whereas uh, it accelerates the positron plus plus repels this implies that we will have more electrons with uh, low energy uh, because of the attraction the energy of the electron is reduced and higher energy positrons positive energy should be increased because of uh, the repulsive force therefore we must compute the Coulomb correction term f of z comma e to the above equation we carried out the same the Coulomb correction enhances the probability of electron emission and decreases the probability of uh, positron emission especially at uh, low energies the coulombic force loses its effect at uh, high energies absorbed from the above kinetic energy curve see this curve only at uh, low energies low kinetic energy region the coulombic effect is taking place uh, its vital role at uh, high energies no talk about the coulombic energy this is for uh, positron this is for uh, electron now read out this the Coulomb correction enhances the probability of electron emission see it enhances the probability of electron emission dn by d is more the Coulomb correction enhances the probability of electron emission and decreases the probability of positive emission here this is the actual curve no Coulomb effect we are having this curve if you neglect the Coulomb effect in our account if you take the Coulombic effect in our account, the Coulombic correction enhances the probability of electron emission. See here, beta minus, more and more beta particles we are having, dn by d, more and more electrons you can have. But decreases the beta plus emission, positron emission. 
the coulomb correction enhances the probability of electron emission and it decreases the probability of uh, positron emission especially at low energies but the coulomb force has no effect at uh, high energies that's all about uh, fermi theory of uh, beta decay